Hey buddy, you gotta wake up. We're going through the causeway. Hey buddy, you gotta wake up. We're going through the causeway. It's 1044, you gotta get up. Hey Elmer, will you get in here and make sure this guy will wake up? We're going through the causeway. It's 10 44. Gotta get up. We're going through the causeway. Oh, we're going through the causeway. Alright, buddy. Wake up. Uh, huh? Oh. Uh, sorry. I was just having the uh, most wonderful dream. Uh, I was dreaming I was on an island in the tropics with some, uh, some movie star dame. At least I think it was the tropics. There's palm trees everywhere. Oh. Anyway, it was it was nice. Uh, she kept uh, complaining about how hot it was, and she asked me if she could disrobe so she could take a swim. I uh, pretended I was a little bit hard of hearing, so she'd come a little bit so she'd come a little bit closer. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, I had her come up to me and I, I said, "Excuse me, miss. I can't quite, can't quite hear what you're saying. Could you uh, come a little bit closer?" And she starts coming a little bit closer, and then it turned into you telling me that it was 10:44. I need this. And that, <clears throat> gentlemen, is the degree of the kind of luck that I've been having the last couple of months. Oh, don't get me wrong, fellas. I sure appreciate you letting me ride along with you for free since I had the misfortune of missing my early train. <clears throat> for reasons I won't get into, as they may bore you. But I will say this, she was beautiful. In the right light, that is. And is now the proud owner of a pretty good bankroll, my own. But how can I complain when I have good friends like you gentlemen to see me through my journey? So here's to good friends, good cigars. I have one. And, uh, here's to good riddance to bad rubbish, as they say. <laughs> anyway, be that as it may, we're almost near your destination. You're gonna have to get off at the crossing when we make the line switch. Wayne. Well, partner, where are you headed to after this? Well, well, let me guess. Montague. Nope. Uh, Charlottetown. Nope. Sorry? No, no, and no, gentlemen. Well, don't tell me Kensington. You're going to Kensington. Nope. Where the hell are you going? Summerside. Summerside? You like you didn't say Summerside. That's what I said. The poor fat broad place. I'm telling you, man. You've been going there. What the hell are you going to Summerside for, Dave? Summerside? You gotta be kidding, brother. Nope. I have a contract to start work in Summerside almost immediately. Well, brother, either you've had a little bit too much hooch, or you're just plain nuts. Summerside will chew you up and spit you out in little pieces. They're all nuts there. I'm telling you, he's what crazy. is he thinking? I, he's crazy, Dwayne. Won't last two days. 
Long last bar. <laughs> Stay away from there, buddy. Stay away? But why? One hamlet is as good as bad as the other. Besides, a friend of mine went ahead two months ago to do some preliminary work. I haven't heard back from him. So I gotta know what's going on, gentlemen. Oh, well, I'm not surprised about that. He's like been in jail on some trumped up charge. They hate strangers coming into their town, breathing any kind of life into it. Police force there is as bad as a joke itself. These are ignorant, dangerous folks, brother. Your friend would be wise to just turn tail and run back to wherever he came from. Mexico. What's that, brother? That's where he's from. Mexico. Uh, what's that, brother? Did you say Mexico? He's as good as dead right now. He's good as dead. I'll tell you that right now. What? You guys are, you're kidding me, right? I've known this guy for years. I met him years ago when I was uh, building some experimental wind structures in this town. He's a great little worker. I mean, he's a Mexican. You mean to say this fella is actually Mexican? Well, if he is, like I say, he's already dead. They hate foreigners. Especially Mexicans, I'm sure. <laughs> you guys can't be serious. <laughs> no, you can't be. No, you're not serious. Stop. I bid you a good evening. Thank you both for your hospitality. I'm off to Summerside.
Everything closed around here. Little town. Get in there and talk to me. What the hell are you doing here, and why the hell haven't you answered any of my calls or letters? I'm in deep trouble, Senor Steele. Trouble? What kind of trouble? I'm doomed. Paco, you're not, you're not making any sense. I think you've been sick. Maybe you need a doctor. No, Senor. No one can help me now. I am doomed. How are you doomed? What are you talking about? Come with me. I know some place we can talk. Come, senor.
What is all this cloak and dagger nonsense? This is just a little spot where I thought I could hide. They have not found me yet. What has been going on around here? I just... I don't get it. And, and what happened to the windmill project? Did you get, uh... Did you get mixed up with a girl or something? If only it was a girl, senor. Then I would tell my Maria. And she would scream. And cry. And scratch my eyes out. But then we would make love. Sweet love. And everything would be alright again. Everything would be all right again. Paco, pay attention. <sighs> okay, was it gambling? Maybe you got into a crooked poker game or something? Senor, I don't play the cards. And the only woman for me has been always Maria. And when have you ever known me to take a drink on the job? Senor, you should know better than to ask such questions of me. I am a loyal worker. I'm sorry, Paco. You're right, of course. But you must understand that none of this makes any sense to me. And what happened to your face? I mean, man, you took one hell of a beating. Who did this to you? Please, do fill me in. This is also how you say... Bizarre! Ah, uh, these people are evil, backwards, bigoted, suspicious, trash. They try to rule their own destinies and they, they don't allow interference of outsiders to upset their apple cart. Who are these people that you're talking about? Everybody, senor. Everybody. They hate outsiders. Especially ones like me, my brother, whom they consider undesirable. My god, your brother. What has happened to your brother, Manuel? They finally got him the other night. We were tired from being on the run. We found a place to sleep that we thought was safe, under a bridge. I got up in the middle of the night because I thought I heard a noise. So I wandered off into the darkness to check it out. Then I heard Manuel yelling for help. And by the time I got back, it was too late. They had taken him away in a car. I fear that he is dead now. I will never see him again. Don't talk like that. Your brother's a survivor. We'll find him. But why didn't you just go straight to the police? The police? <laughs> you are funny. The police are the ones who are behind the whole fiasco. There's one who is very mean. I heard them call him Inspector Doyle. Please watch out for him, senor. Listen. When I leave here, they will be after me again, and they will not rest until they take care of me for good. Do yourself a favor and save yourself by getting out of this town. They don't want us here. They don't want our windmills either. This town is a dead zone. I must go. Farewell, my friend. Paco, how will I reach you? If I survive the night, I will reach you somehow, somewhere. Uh, well, where are you going to go next? To hell, I hope. Any place is better than this place.
Hey buddy. Hey buddy. That's right. We're over here. That's it, fancy man. <laughs> you can't see us, but we can see you. Don't walk away. Where do you think you're going in the middle of the night, huh? Where do you think you're going, you? We want to talk to you. We'd like some information. Yeah, we'd like some information about you and your little uh, Mexican friend. Don't walk away. We're with the police. We're with the police. Yeah, we're policemen. And if you walk away from us, well, we might have to start shooting. Hey, come back here. Okay, boys, shoot. I give you, they're not going to be the right ones. Well, now, you let me be the judge of that. I'm Inspector Doyle. These two gentlemen with me are my deputies. Cupcake Gallant, Jaunty Alouette. You're kidding. Charm, gentlemen, I'm sure. <laughs> he talk kind of fancy, huh, boss? I wonder how fancy he would talk with no teeth. Well, are you a tourist? Because um, I really hope the answer is going to be yes. Well, gentlemen, if you must know, I've come to your quaint little town to uh, start up a windmill project that I'm currently uh, in the midst of getting up off the ground. I see. Um, do you always travel around in the middle of the night? Well, no, but I didn't think my travel plans were anyone's business but my own. You sure have a mouth on you, mister. That's not good. <laughs> Did you hear that, boss? Did you hear what Cupcake said? You mean... He actually just said something? Cupcake uh, thinks we should uh, just take you off to the jail for the night. Uh, on what charge, Cupcake? <laughs> Vagrancy, I guess. Your guess is as good as mine. Oh, that's always good, vagrancy. Listen, I just got into town. I didn't even have a chance to look for a hotel no, yet. No, 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 no. I think we can clear this up in a few minutes. Um, that's if you're smart enough to cooperate. You, uh, you're smart enough to cooperate, aren't you? Oh, I don't know. I'm all for cooperation. Let's give it a try. That's good. That's good, mister. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to give me the right answer. Uh, that's all there is to it. Sounds simple enough.
Where's the Mexican? I don't know. Boys? <laughs> Wrong answer. We can do this all night long. So, I'm gonna ask you again. Where's the Mexican? I know you know him. Is he Mexican? I thought he was Irish. He had an accent. Oh. <laughs> Alright, look. You and I both know what the score is here. Our little foreign friend isn't going to be leaving this town here. Alive, anyway. So it's probably in your best interest to give him up. Ah! Ah! Jesus! Okay, okay, so I know him. Ah, he's an associate of mine. But what did he do that's so terrible? Ah, this is insane. What did he do? He's a Mexican. A freaking Mexican. We don't want those kind of people in our town. And you know what, mister? We got news for you. We don't want your windmills here either. Yeah, we don't want no more of those things on our hills. Right, boss? More? Shut your mouth, jean -T. But it's true, boss. Wait a minute. Ah. It was my understanding that you didn't have any windmill projects around here. Then we don't. Not yet, anyway. We get you uh, smart slickers coming in here telling us how to run our lives. Uh, we resent that. Get me? Uh, I guess so. But what do you guys got against progress anyway? A project like this will save the town a lot of money. Uh, creates jobs. Helps your kids go to college. Yeah, sure. But if it don't put money in my pocket, then... I don't need it. Put money in our pocket, right, boss? Yeah, sure. So you make the choices for this town. Ah! And everyone has to live and die with the choices that Doyle makes. Yeah, something like that. I'm the Pope of this town. I don't know whether to pity you or genuflect. Boss, I, I agree with Cupcake. Let's get rid of this guy now and avoid any more trouble with him. Uh, no, 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 boys. We've made our point. Uh, no, I've decided to let you go, mister. You know, uh, got uh, our eyes on you and your Mexican friend. They already have his brother in safekeeping, but you already know that, so... I suggest you get yourself a good night's sleep and uh, be on your way out of town in the morning. How's that sound? Thanks for the advice, mister, but <clears throat> I think I'll stick around for the time being. That's your decision, mister. The time might be running out for you before you know it. <laughs> like I said before, I'm going to take my chances. Might interest you gentlemen to know that I have an appointment later this week with Mayor Parsley Stavert. You slickers are all the same. Oh, by the way, you might be better off staying at a B&B &B on the outskirts of town. Tomorrow's the beginning of our annual lobster carnival, craft fair, and bingo extravaganza. Ah. A lot of famous bingo players will be here from other parts of the county. So all the hotels, uh, well, they'll be pretty full, I'm sure. Gee, that, uh, sounds thrilling. Thanks for the hospitality, but, uh, I've already found a place to stay. Looks like I'm going to, uh, be staying with Father Ted Buffman for a couple of days. Oh! Oh! Everything's all right.
Father Ted. I was just wondering if I could have a moment of your time. You're not from around here, are you, my boy? No, I'm not. I uh, just arrived in town and I was wondering if you could uh, put me up for a couple of days until I uh, get myself established. You seem to be in a certain amount of pain there. Is uh, something wrong with your ribs? Let's just say that last night wasn't one of my better nights. <clears throat> so, uh, what brings you to Summerside? Business? Pleasure? Or you're just passing through? Well, uh, business, I guess. I'm trying to, uh, put together a project for, uh, wind energy, if they'll let me. What do you mean, if they let you? Oh. I see you're probably running into some resistance. <laughs> resistance? Say that again. Resistance by city officials, if that don't beat all. Police? Yep. Inspector Doyle and his officials. <laughs> yeah, well, if you see Doyle, you really should turn and head the other way. Yeah, I, I've pretty much figured that out by now. Uh, come along with me, we'll, we'll get you set up for a couple of days. Uh, if you don't mind if I take a shave on the way? I got up way too early for mass this morning. It's awful stuff, but that's all I have right now. 
Uh, please, just call me Ted. I, uh, I don't go much for that father handle, if you know what I mean. Well, I'm just glad to be of some assistance to the, the troubled and downtrodden. I'm glad to be of some assistance, but you just don't seem to be the downtrodden type. Well, I never thought of myself that way either until I stepped into this town last night. Oh? Do go on. I'm intrigued. Well, there seems to be a policeman named Doyle who just doesn't want to see me or my associates do any business of any kind in this town. Ah, uh, good old Sheriff Doyle. Don't you mean uh, Chief Inspector Doyle? Well, I think that's a name that he just gave himself because he thought it sounded more important. He's just a glorified sheriff, but uh, take my word for it, you don't want to mess with him or his goons. He has a reputation, you know, and it's not a very good one. Oh? What kind of a reputation? Uh, excuse me one sec. Father Ted here. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, Julie dear, how are you? Uh, no, no, Father Ted hasn't forgotten about you. He's just been uh, really busy lately with the uh, new bingo hall and, and whatnot and Father Ted's blood boiling. Uh, how about next Thursday at 8 p.m.? I have a ribbon to cut for the opening of the new hospital, but that shouldn't take too long. Oh, sounds kinky. Wear that little strapless number, and I'll bring the rope. Okay? Uh, yes, you were saying that Doyle has this reputation? Yes, my son. Please, call me Biff. Okay, Biff. Uh, my advice to you would be to stay away from Doyle because he's hard and I don't mean in a good way <coughs> if you know what I mean uh, I think I do but I've uh, got some really important business to do as far as I can tell this town really needs it last night I walked around downtown and all I see is businesses that are boarded up or gone out of business and everything's closed and... Hello. Oh, Dolly. Oh, little Dolly. Or should I say big Dolly?
Ay, ay, ay! It's Robert Bima! The devil himself! your voice. Ooh, sounds sexy. You're making me all goose pimply. How's the girls? Ooh, that sounds nice. Are they ready for a good snuggling? <laughs> all right. Ooh. I'll bet they're popping out of their blouse right now. Uh, isn't Bob due for a fishing trip soon? When? Mm-hmm. Well, when can I see you? Thursday? I... I have a ribbon-cutting ceremony at the hospital on Thursday, and I, I'm afraid I'll be all tied up for quite some time. Well, that's kind of too bad for right now, but let me know if anything changes, okay? Okay, farewell, my love. <laughs> okay, bye. Uh, excuse me, but that was uh, Dolly and Dolly. It's like shoes. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, okay, great. I got it. I understand. No need to explain. It looks like this town could use a real shot in the arm. And that's why I'm here. The buildings just sit there up for sale, and I bet there's no takers either. It's nothing but tumbleweeds. Be that as it may, Doyle's still no good. He's got his hands in everybody's pocket. He knows what everybody does. He controls everyone. He's just so corrupt that he's slowly bringing the town to its knees. Everybody bows to Doyle sooner or later. Everybody but the stranger. The stranger? Who's the stranger? Well, I don't really know him personally. All I get all, all, everything I know about him has just been uh, given to me in bits and pieces by my congregation. Uh, I don't think he uh, attends Mass. Uh, I've never seen him there. I think he, he's an atheist and uh, he just showed up here in Summerside a few months ago and rumor has it Doyle tried to run him out of town. Doyle tried to run him out of town the first night. <laughs> I know how that feels. But what you don't know is just shortly after that, Doyle seemed to become his best friend. That is, if Doyle could ever have a friend, uh, they'd be seen having meetings that seemed awfully important uh, as far as what the townspeople tell me. Well, you know, small town folk like to gossip. Still, that's something. He must have had something that Doyle wanted. Doyle and the stranger seem to become fast friends, and uh, the stranger staying out at the old Brady place on the edge of town. I don't know if he bought the place or if he's renting it from the realtor. Probably rent. Oh, why do you say renting? Well, I'd say renting because... He's not the type to want to live in a town like this. I think he's up to something, but I'll be damned if I know what it is. Some people say he's a developer, but I haven't seen evidence of anything. So what has he got that makes Doyle his puppet? If I were a gambling man, I'd say it's about money. and He has lots of it. Doyle loves money. 
He thinks the change is the man makes him better. He came from the poor side of the tracks. He thinks that money actually improves a man, but it doesn't, you know. Well, it's uh, running a close second, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> That's the downfall of all you business types. You allow yourselves to think that your intentions are good and righteous, and you're just instruments of some higher power here to swing a mighty sword and make good the downfall of man while you gild your pathway to heaven. In truth, you're all phonies to the core. Is this a sermon, Father? No, no, Biff. This is just another view on life. Besides, who are you to judge? I mean, it's certainly none of my business, but after the phone calls you've been taking, you might be found out to be the biggest phony of all. Yes, there is some truth to this, my son, but the difference is that I know it. Well, either way, I'm not judging you. As a matter of fact, I'm glad we had this little talk. It hasn't told me much, but it has made the coffee go down a little easier. <laughs> it's awful stuff, isn't it? But that's all I have. We'll get your quarters ready. Come with me. We'll give you a place to stay for the duration. Hello, sir. May I be of any assistance? Uh, yes, ma'am. Is Mayor Parsley Stafford in? Uh, yes, I believe he's in. Um, could I see him? And who should I say is calling? Mr. Biff Steele. Oh, oh, um, I'm sorry, but the mayor isn't in his chambers today. Uh, but you just said that he wasn't. Uh, no, I didn't. I'm pretty sure you just said that about 10 seconds ago. Oh, I'm afraid you've been mistaken, sir. Perhaps you should come back tomorrow. Hmm, how about uh, 1 p.m.? Um, well, I had an appointment today for 1 p.m., and it's 5 2 now. Oh, uh, well, yes, but as I've already told you, he isn't in today. Tomorrow, 1 p.m.? I'll be back tomorrow at 1 p.m. Very good, sir, and have a nice day. Thank you. Good day, sir. Good day. Uh, Biff Steele, do you remember me from yesterday? Mmm, I believe I do, yes. One o'clock appointment to see Mayor Parsley Stafford. Oh, um, I'm sorry he isn't in today. He's not in today, but this is two appointments in a row that you've uh, brushed me off. I'm sorry about that, sir, but he should be in tomorrow. Why don't you try again tomorrow? Late in the day, say around 4.45? So if I went up to Wendy's right now, would I find him? Well, I wouldn't know that, sir. I think you're just being silly now. What time tomorrow? 4.45. I'll be back tomorrow at 4.45. Thank you, sir. Have a nice day. I'll try. Oh, dear. Oh dear, what? That can't mean anything good. I'm sorry, sir, but I think you just missed the mayor. How do I... Oh, I know. Johnny Toronto. Well... There goes nothing. Yeah, Johnny, I'm done for the day. I'm gonna go have a sleep up in the net parking lot.
But Johnny, I want to pick something up at the chicken outfit and then have a sleep in the Met parking lot. No, man. No, you got to go pick her up now, man. Go pick her up now. This is Johnny Toronto talking here. Uh, but Johnny, I want to have a sleep. No, man. You pick up Mrs. Jones right now. She's a good paying customer, man. She pays the bills, man. My gosh. Over and out. Toronto. Okay, Johnny. <laughs> How are you doing, you old son of a bitch? Johnny Toronto. They told me downstairs I'd find you up here. Holy freak! I don't believe it! Biff! Holy freak, man! Holy cow, Biff! Great to see you, man! Johnny Toronto. Great to see you. Great to see you, Johnny. Frank, man! What you been now, man? Uh, 20 years. 20, 20 years. 22. 22 years, man. Massey Hall, the Stones, Keith Richards. <laughs> what are you doing here? Uh, just, you know, a couple of questions I gotta ask. You need some help, man? I need some help. Johnny Toronto, man, the guy to come to. That's cool, man. That's See what I any thought. good bands? No, I, I. I'm going back, man. You're going back? I'm going back to Toronto, man, I'm telling you. Get all the good bands. Well, that's... Uh, well, come on, so always a place for you. Cool, man, cool. Johnny, I'm going to need your help. Well, you come to the right place, man. I knew it, buddy. That's why I'm here. You can always count on Johnny Toronto. I knew I could count on Johnny Toronto. Gordon? You knew it. You hey. know it then, you know it now. I don't forget anything, man. Atta boy, Johnny Toronto. Not for a pal. Ah, uh, let's knock him back. What seems to be the trouble? Well, Johnny, I'm being, as you may put it, hassled by the man. Oh, man. Man, I hate when that happens. I hate that, man. If we were in Toronto. That would never happen. That would never happen in Toronto, but this is Summerside, Johnny. No good bands in Summerside, man. You gotta go to Toronto. That's where the bands are, man. Well, I... Man's gotta make a living. I've been trying to make a living. I've got some assholes putting a stop to it. Tell me about it, man. Well, I'll tell you about it, but along the way, I got a couple of questions for you. No problem, man. So what you're saying, man, is you're in trouble with the man. Man. I'm in trouble with the man, man. And you know who the man is, and I don't. Well, what can I do to help, man? You're Johnny Toronto. You know the ins and outs of Summerside. You yeah. know the ins and outs of Toronto. Man, I'm telling you, there's nothing Johnny Toronto don't there's know about Summerside. There's nothing Johnny Toronto doesn't know about Summerside. That's why I'm here. That's why you're the man I came to see. I got some questions, Johnny Toronto. Fire away, man. Fire away. Here we go. As much as I'd like to sit and talk to you uh, about bands, and by the way, last show I saw you at was at Massey Hall, but it wasn't the Stones, it was Burton Cummings. I mean, I remember. You, you don't think I do, but I do. This is the thing. I've been trying for days to get in to see this mayor, this parsley stabbered. Stafford's haunts, you know, his joints, 
No, no I, I don't mean, you know, those kind of joints, Johnny. I need to know where this guy's hanging out, because I need to drop in on him. I need to talk to this guy, like Prano. I gotta have a conversation with him, like, right away, Johnny. Cool, man, you know? Ah, oh, man. Man, you've got a problem. Ain't nothing Johnny Toronto can't fix for you, man. You came to the right place, man. Johnny Toronto will fix things for you. Is that cool with you, Johnny? Huh? What can you tell me? <laughs> man, this is simple, man. It's a no-brainer. Burton Cummings. No, it's a no-brainer, man. Let me tell you, every Thursday night, old Parsley and all his little cronies, they play poker. Down at the Public Works, man. Public Works building number two. They're always playing poker there, man, and they think they're so cool, man. But they're not cool, man. They don't even know what a band is, man. They don't know what a friggin' band is, man. They've never even been to Toronto. Oh, I'm but I'm going back to Toronto. I'm going back. I know it's been 22 years, but I'm going back to Toronto, man. Yeah. Because that's where the band's at. It's where you play the bands and you just listen to them all night and you get high. You get some chick, right, man? Poker. Public Works building number two. I know exactly where that is. Jeez, good to see you, man. Good to see you. Well, it's good to see you, too. Well, thank you for everything you told me, and uh, I hope you make it back to Toronto. Toronto, man. Drink, JT. Shanti, offer the man a drink or something. Name your poison, sir. No, thank you, gentlemen. I've had enough uh, stimulation the last couple of days. But uh, I am here to uh, work on a little bit of business. You do remember the business we were corresponding on in the last year. Now, now, Cuppy. Don't be unfriendly. That guest come a long way. Let's see. We should oblige him like the gentleman we are. Now, sir. Why are we here to talk about it? You know damn well what we're here to talk about. I thought you and I had a business arrangement settled months ago. But then my assistant goes into hiding, but I don't hear from you for weeks. When I finally do get here, I'm greeted by a goddamn coon squad. I get the crap beaten out of me by a bunch of ignoramuses. And for what? For what? Boss, why don't I cut him right now? I could cut him good. <clears throat> I came here to build windmills in good faith. 
Well, did you, Mrs. Steve? Did you indeed? I've spilled every last dime I have into this deal. No, no, Mr. Still. I mean, did you come here in real good faith? I pose this question simply because I have been told by a gentleman about your crooked dealings from the past. Certain gentleman? What certain gentleman? I didn't know anyone in this town. That is until I got here the other day. I did not say that you knew him, sir. I just said I was familiar with his dealings. Your background does not lie in windmills, sir, should I say, but in other areas of expertise. Boy, oh boy. This nightmare just keeps getting better and better, doesn't it? I know who you must be talking about. You're talking about the stranger, aren't you? Talking about that guy that's shrouded in mystery that lives on the other side of town. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> I'm asking, and who told you about this stranger? Alright, you really want to know who it is? You want to know who it was told me? The priest who told me. Father Ted. Ted Bossman. Let's cut to the chase. What do you know about precious stones? Precious stones? Like, what sort? What about pearls, for instance? Nothing. Nothing at all. Boss, let me hit him just once. I'll knock the information right out of him. Now, now, JT. We're gonna conduct ourselves as gentlemen. This week, we're gonna mine for pearls. Go ahead, I don't know anything about it. The stranger begs to differ, and we don't want you ruining our plans. So that's why you were all so unfriendly when Paco and I came to town. Paco, where the hell is Paco, anyway? We haven't found your little friend yet. But we shall. Look, I'm just here to build windmills. I'm not in on any pearl mining expedition. So I'm not in on any uh, pearl digging. Wait a minute! You don't, you don't dig for pearls. You, you dive. You guys are stupid. Steel. time, Doyle? You gonna beat me up again, or are you gonna leave me in some godforsaken swamp, or what? No need to be like that, sugar. Just hop in. Got some stuff to talk about. It's a golden sugar. To tell you the truth, I don't even know why the hell I got in your car. I mean, considering everything that's happened, I can't think of a good reason. Do you have a good reason? Look, if you'd stop jawing for a minute, 
maybe you'd listen and find out I got some good news for you. What kind of possible good news could you have for me? Well, your little friend has been released from our custody. Thought you might want to know that. You mean Manuel? The very same. That's what his name was, wasn't it? So you did have him in your jail. But what I can't figure out is your sudden change of attitude. Well, we gave him a phone call. So you gave him a phone call? What exactly is that supposed to mean? Well... He did the, uh... Well, he pulled an E.T. and called home. Wife was sick and... Felt bad for the poor little guy, so we let him go. So you're telling me that... Out of the kindness of your heart, you've just let him go. Yes. You haven't heard about my giant, generous heart. I've got some uh, release papers here for you to Not only that, but uh, your little friend can come out of hiding, and you guys can go on with your little windmill project and uh, no more interference from us, so, you know, enjoy your time in our happy, friendly little town. Well, if you say so, but call me crazy, I'm getting the feeling that there's one or two things that are a little bit sketchy here. No, no, believe it, it's gonna happen. Go ahead, do your thing. Get your project underway. No more interference. And uh, I know you're going to be busy and everything, but, you know, take a little time out when you have uh, a few minutes and head down to the Lobster Carnival and uh, Craft Fair and Big Go Extravaganza Exhibition. And don't forget, later on this month, it's going to be a big deal, we're going to have the Folk Dancers versus the Step Dancers. Folk dancing. I've never heard of that one before, and they judge that against step dancing, so that makes that makes about as much sense as mining for pearls. You're obviously not from around here, are you? Folk dancing is a big part of this community. But anyway, you'll know the folk dancing when you see it, because it's quite a thing, I gotta tell you, because, you know, if you look closely, lady folk dancers they wear those like little purple fentex slippers if you know what i'm saying so keep an eye out for that so i can just go ahead with this project i'm not going to get any interference from you no strings attached you're on your own, Pinocchio. You're a real boy. No strings attached. Okay, Mr. Doyle. Or should I say, Inspector Doyle. I'll take care of Paco, and you take care of the mayor. You do that. And I'll take care of the mayor. I'll take care of the mayor, all right. Paco, are you there somewhere? Paco, are you under there? Come on out. We've got some good news. Good news for the both of us now. Paco? Senor Steele? Paco, are you, are you there somewhere? Senor Steele, is that you?
I want to thank you, senor, for getting the heat taken off of me. I was nearly going crazy never knowing where to turn next, but I knew that my great friend, Senor Steele, would come along and help me when I needed help the most. Ah, uh, don't worry about that anymore, Paco. You and I have more important things to concentrate on. We've got windmills to build. Ah, but it is important, senor. You don't realize what a great relief it is to be able to walk the streets again and not be bullied upon by the ones who think that you're nothing more than dirt underneath your feet. It is important. Okay, okay, Paco. I don't know what to say, but you're welcome. Now come over here and have a look at the site for this project. I am afraid that I cannot concentrate on any project while I still have my brother in jail. I am sorry, senor. Oh, yes, your brother. They told me they already released him. They just wanted to keep him in there long enough to put a little uh, fear of God into him. He's already on his way back to San Antonio. I wouldn't worry about that. Now, come here and have a look at the plans. Already gone back home? No, 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 no. That cannot be. My brother would never go home without letting me know about it. Especially in this case. He would never just abandon me here to fend for myself. We are brothers, senor. We are as close as that. No, there is something wrong with this picture. They still have him in their jail. Or worse yet, they may have done away with him. <sighs> Jeez. I knew you were going to make a bigger deal out of this than what it already is, Paco, but uh, in this case, I can't say I blame you, considering what's gone on. Regardless, have a look at this. I think it'll make you feel better. What is this? A piece of paper? How's a piece of paper going to make me feel better? <sighs> Jesus, it's a release form. Just read it, read it. It's signed by uh, Inspector Doyle and uh, some Judge Pope guy. Your sister-in-law is sick. Read it. Connie? What is the matter with Connie? Is it the baby? Calm down and let me tell you. Apparently in their sick twisted fun, they allowed Manuel a phone call, so he called home only to find out that Connie was back in the hospital. She had false labor pains or something, but they wanted to keep her in the hospital for a few more days to keep an eye on her. Anyway, apparently Doyle was listening in on the other line, and when he heard the news, he thought he'd better release Manuel and send him right home, on the condition that he do just that. Go home pronto, as he put it. Said Manuel grabbed at that opportunity like uh, a man lost in the desert would grab onto a canteen. Poor bastard. He's gone home? And without even saying goodbye? Look, at least he's out of here with his wife. He's gone now. Uh, I'm sure we could have used him, but... Uh, Enough with these ridiculous delays, eh, uh, partner? It's just me and you. Let's say we get some work done. What do you think? Yes. Yes. Yes! Let us get some work done. Uh... It's getting a little bit late now, uh, Paco. What do you say we, uh... We go to the fair and have some fun.
when I did it once. Yeah. I went to church. And I... Uh, Senor. Thank you for a... That's good stuff. A really wonderful evening. Yeah. Oh. Senor. Oh, that's good stuff. That was a really wonderful evening that we did tonight. You're absolutely in love with a woman, I said. I can tell by your face. You foolish bastard. You're welcome. You're crazy. I am in love with a woman. My Maria. And I miss I miss my Maria. And my brother. I know what size it is, but things are gonna get better. I know what it is. You, you know. I, you know how it is. Things are gonna get better. I do know. I miss my Maria too. Yes, Maria. <coughs> you know, Vaco, we had some good times tonight. Couple drinks, couple laughs. But tomorrow is all business. It's all windmills. I completely agree with you, senor. Wind thrills. Windmills. You remember Karen O'Coin from school with the glasses? <laughs> oh, you, you weren't in my class. What? Shots here, Parsley. You might be the figurehead in this town. I'm the main man here. I'm the head honcho. Don't forget it. Hey, geez, boss, you better take it easy, eh? He's looking uh, pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, he is. Would you say, uh, blood is kind of Trickle? Is it more of a, like a slow leak? It's spurt out of pretty bad there. These boss may be better than off him for a while, eh? Yeah, I guess so. 
So everything's set for tomorrow? Oh yeah, boss, I got the doll set. Everything is day one. Good. Where's the... Uh, where's Cupcake? Oh, he, he went to his opera class and then he's going down to Tim's for a coffee afterwards. Well, tomorrow, to kill the Mexicans down the brown field. Wait for the right moment. We'll arrest our friends. Shrimping boss, everything they want up here, right? Good. How is, uh, how's Cupcake doing his opera class anyway? Oh, well, not so good, boss, not so good. Uh, it's, uh, voice is just not uh, coming true, you know? But, you know, the coffee and things like that, I want to Come to uh, give me a large black. Sure thing, boss. Yeah, yeah I'd say that's a trickle. Mm -hmm. Why don't you go join Cupcake down in the tents? I might spend a few more minutes with the mayor here. You sure you don't need me no more, boss? No, I'm sure. I think Mr. Mayor would agree. I don't think he's in too much shape to, to agree or disagree with nothing right now. He said that's uh, he said, uh, okay, I'll go down to tennis. You do that. <laughs> I cannot believe that this is the place, senor. I gotta get this rig back to the rental company by noon tomorrow, so we better get moving. expected at all. This doesn't look right to me. Look okay to you? I have a bad feeling about this, senor. There's no question this is wrong. But you know what? We're just gonna have to make the most of it. Come on. Si, senor. Holy shit, Paco. I mean, in a crazy town like this, I mean, did you ever think we'd get this far? No, senor. I didn't. Senor, I still have a bad feeling about this town. The entire project. Well, it's not exactly the best site. It's not exactly what I had in mind, but, you know, at least we're going to beat Robert Bima at his own game. We got that much. Oh my God, senor! I almost forgot to tell you! Tell me? Tell me what? Go on, give it to me. 
Better not be more bad news. I'm afraid it is, senor. Come I, on. The other day, I mean, I was watching the parade. I'm sure I saw Robert Bemis float. Tell me you're kidding. I'm afraid. Tell me you're kidding. I'm afraid not, senor. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Paco. That explains everything. That's why all this stuff has been happening to us. That's why all this has been so delayed. It's because of Bima. He's the stranger. So you are not angry at me, senor? <laughs> ha! No. No. But you know what? You and I are going to beat Bima at his own game. Come on, let's get back to work. Si, right senor. now. Come on. This is not a pea shooter. Don't move. Jesus, you guys, don't you ever let up? Isn't there a hockey game on somewhere or something? Whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on don't here? Don't you try anything either, buddy. you steal? I think we're in trouble. Look, I'm getting pretty damn sick and tired of this, so just tell me straight out, what do you want? What do I want? You guys are on private property. What are you talking about? You guys gave us this property. We never gave you this. This property belongs to Farmer Brown up the road. What do I want? I'm taking you guys in for murder. This guy's brother is hanging in the tree over there. Back here. I'll shoot.
Father Ted! <laughs> Father Ted! Why is it so dark in here? Father Ted? A rope? Uh, Father Ted, what are you up to now? Father Ted! <coughs> I'm coming in the room if you're doing anything. Jesus Christ. Who did this to you, you poor bastard? Maybe you just took your games a little bit too seriously. Poor bastard. My dear Mr. Steele, if you haven't yet discovered who the person is that has been the cause of all your trials and tribulations, then you're not half the man I thought you were. The way I see it is that you have two choices. Either you give up now and go on your merry way, or you take your chances and come to the old Brady house and discover for yourself the perpetrator of your worst nightmare. Personally, I think you should give up now. Intolerance now. What do you mean it's making a funny noise? It's supposed to sound like that. I don't know. You okay, boss? Did you kill the Mexican? Well, boss, I'll tell you, he sure could run. But did you kill the Mexican? Well, I, I shot a lot. I emptied three magazines in the field there. You're not 
not answering the question. Did you kill the Mexican? Well, boss, I sure looked like he, he was killed when he rolled down the hill and fell into the river. Right. Where's Cupcake? Uh, he's, he's home watching the Wheel of Fortune. Of course he is. Uh, are you hungry? Oh, I'm starved, boss. I haven't eaten all day. All right, well, why don't you take my car and go join him? Take your car? Yeah, but don't play with the siren again this time. Ah, oh, boss. Thanks, boss. And how do things look for tomorrow, Joe? Hmm. Everything fine on number three? Uh, someone's at the door. I'll get back to you. Well, 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 Biff. So you finally figured it out, have you? I hope it wasn't too much of a mystery for you. You son of a bitch. Give me one reason why I shouldn't kick your ass from now till next Tuesday. Ah, <sighs> still a ruffian hiding behind a pseudo-businessman. What would your fisticuffs accomplish with a rather large hole in your head? Who's the ruffian now, you scum? Your gat doesn't frighten me in the least. I've seen enough guns and fists in the last couple of weeks to last me a goddamn lifetime. Well, yes, please accept my apologies for that, but have you really been inconvenienced so much? Oh, no! I've been threatened, uh, beaten up, shot at a few times, my best workers have probably been murdered, uh, my roommate has been strangled in the bathtub. Why would any of that inconvenience me? Please, please, spare me all those details. Look, you two fairies, I'm tired of waiting for my cut on this project. I want my money now. 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 Listen, you know the terms of our deal. You don't get paid until I get paid. Tomorrow, when they throw the main switch, and the windmill starts turning, and the fat little businessman will write me a fat little check. So you do have them built. I knew it. I knew it all along. Yes, Biff, I've beaten you once again. Where you and I are concerned, I will always defeat you. <clears throat> yeah, last deal you did, you skipped town and let me take the fall, and now you're ready to do it again. Hey, 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 what gives here? Don't listen to him, Doyle. Uh, you shut up a minute here. What were you just talking about a second ago, buddy? Oh, sure, he didn't tell you guys? He had it all worked out to a T. He collects the big checks and skips down and leaves me with a bunch of useless windmills that break down every couple of hours or so. They were his designs, by the way. They didn't break down. You sabotaged them. Ah, they broke down. My designs were sound. Your designs were flimsy at best. They needed my engineering skill, but you wanted no part of it. Lies. Lies. All lies. I could have you killed. What, like you did with Paco? Okay. Okay. Enough. You guys can reminisce whenever about old times. I don't care. I want my money. I'm not leaving until I get my money. But I just told you... Oh, go ahead, Bob. Pay him. Go home. I'll pay you tomorrow. I'm not leaving until I get paid. You'll have to kill me first. Okay.
That's not good. That's not good at all. You know, I didn't mean to kill him. Well, he's, he's dead now. Well, join me tomorrow and I'll split the profits with you. Not me. I'm just a poor wind engineer. Face it, Bima. You are finished. And one other thing. You know why your windmills were messing up all the time? That's because of a, a little invention of mine. I call this the little Dutch boy. It would have prevented a lot of disaster. But no, you wouldn't install it. Had to be all Bima or nothing. See you, Bob. Good luck. You might want to keep that as a souvenir. No use trying to program it because I'm the only one with the numbers. Up here.
didn't happen to know if any of those fine outstanding communities are in need of any energy efficient windmills, would you? Windmills, sir? Windmills, Porter. Uh, I wouldn't think so, sir. Thank you, Porter.